grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus, who says, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in me, believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me so that you may also be where I am. You know where I am going and you know the way. Lord, we don't know where you are going, Thomas replied. So how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is God's word. Dear friends in Christ, 50 years ago today, May 14, 1967, was also Mother's Day. We went to church that morning and we came home afterwards and we had Sunday dinner and then I, I gave my mother the card that I had prepared with my teacher's help in first grade at Redemption Lutheran School in Milwaukee. And my mom said she wasn't feeling too good and she went to lie down on the, on the bed. I went out in the backyard to play in the sandbox. And my mother never woke up again. And I know that she is in one of those mansions that Jesus went to prepare because she knew Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus promised to give her and you and me a mansion in his house in heaven. How do I know that Jesus is the way? Because he's told me, and he is also the truth. He's told me in the Bible. And to all who believe that, Jesus is the life, eternal life. He died, he rose, and he will raise us up from the dead on the last day. So let's consider Jesus' words together today and remember gladly that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Everyone wants to get to heaven, don't they? Well, not exactly everyone. Some people, of course, atheists say there is no heaven and there is no hell. And of course, there are small, weird, minority groups called Satanists around the country. We hear about them, especially in Oklahoma. <laughs> but by and large, most people want to get to heaven or something called heaven. And most people seem to think that it's easy to get there. They think that everyone will eventually get there. They think that there are multiple, easy, broad freeways that lead there. Last week, the Democratic leader in Congress, Nancy Pelosi, flew to India so that she could get blessed by the Dalai Lama at his Buddhist temple. This is the same Nancy Pelosi who says she's a faithful Catholic even though she's virulently pro-abortion. She thinks that you're better off if you pursue as many wide highways as you can and then you'll get to heaven for sure. And you realize, of course, that the way she's thinking is the way most Americans think. But Jesus makes himself so clear in our text, John chapter 14, when he says to his disciples, you know where I am going and you know the way. Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way, Thomas replied. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We humans all deserve eternal punishment in hell 
Because God demands perfection and we are not perfect. But Jesus was punished in our place for our sins, for our shortcomings. He paid for all our sins so that through faith in him, we know the way to heaven. We trust in Jesus and we will go to heaven. It's as simple as that. Simple doesn't mean easy. There's a reason Jesus began this text by saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. The Jesus way to heaven leads us through plenty of hardships. Rather than a six-lane highway, the Jesus way to heaven is rather challenging. It often resembles a narrow, rocky path. It passes over high mountains and, and through deep valleys, even the valley of the shadow of death. Just this week, there was an international conference in Washington, D.C., with Christians from all over the globe meeting together to discuss the rampant persecution against Christians around the world and how many have been dying each and every year as a result of persecution. And even here in America, the mood has become decidedly more anti-Jesus and anti-Christian. And that narrow path that we follow Jesus on to heaven leads us through some, some dark woods, but then it also crosses overpasses over beautiful wide freeways. Just when our knees start burning the most and our ankles are sore and we're tempted to, to go down the embankment to the side of that freeway and hitchhike along that beautiful wide road. After all, the devil tells us that all roads lead to heaven anyways, doesn't he? But Jesus has told us, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Why stay on that narrow path? Well, it's all because of that promise Jesus offers us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me so that you may be also where I am. That's why we stay on the narrow path because it leads to heaven through Jesus. Since that path is so narrow and so difficult to find, how do we keep from getting lost? Well, Jesus not only tells us that he is the way, he tells us, I am the truth. If you like to hike in the woods, you know that sometimes the further you venture down the path, the harder it is to see the path. Sometimes they get a bit overgrown. So what do you do? Well, you, you're sure to grab a trail map before you get on, and you follow it closely, and you keep your eyes peeled for the little signs for the trail or the little ribbons on the tree branches that are put there so you know how to get to your goal. Well, Jesus has given us a thorough, detailed trail map to follow in his holy word. It not only shows us the way, it also points out all the dangers and pitfalls around the way. It, it warns us of, of the different animals we may encounter. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. It warns us not to take side paths. It prevents us from taking so-called shortcuts that are sure to get us lost. That's how we get to heaven. 
His word tells us when to stop, when to go, when to slow down, when to speed up. Now there are counterfeit maps in circulation. And there are fake trail guides too. There's Islam, of course. There's Buddhism. Atheism is actually also a religion. There are formal and informal man-made religions all around us, both old and new. Perhaps the most popular one is universalism. Everybody gets to go to heaven. But these religions all disagree with Jesus. And Jesus claims here in our text that he is not a truth, but the truth. Two contradictory truths cannot be both true at the same time. In the play Fiddler on the Roof, one of the townsmen is able to read, and he's reading a newspaper, and he says that there are persecutions of Jews taking place in, in other villages in Russia. We should, we should be worried about this, he says, and Tevius says, you're right. And then somebody else says, well, why should we worry about that? Why should we break our heads over what happens in the outside world? Let the outside world break its own head. And Tevius says, yeah, you're right. And then somebody else chimes in and says, well, they can't both be right. And Tevius says, you know, you're right too. And at that point, of course, everybody laughs. But people don't laugh when they hear this all the time. People believe, postmodern people believe, that two opposite truths can be both true at the same time. Jesus doesn't say that, but Pontius Pilate did. Jesus says, I am the truth. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, Jesus isn't just a teacher. Jesus is the word of God himself. He is God, one with the Father, as he explains. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that'll be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. All others err. Jesus cannot err. His words are faithful and true because he is God speaking to us. So when Jesus rebukes us and tells us that we've done something wrong, that is the word of God itself telling me that. He tells me when I'm wrong so that I don't venture off the path and fall off a, a cliff and, and die. And his words are equally true and trustworthy when he reassures us as we make our way through the dark and frightening woods. When Jesus says, I love you, you can count on that. Those words are faithful and true. Most important of all, when, when we tell him, I'm sorry, and he says, I forgive you, we can count on his words word completely which means we can also count on his word when Jesus says because I live you also will live Jesus is the way to heaven Jesus is the truth that tells us how we get to heaven through his innocent life and death in our place and Jesus is eternal life Last week we heard the good shepherd say to us, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. We've already begun our eternal life in Jesus. Does it always feel that way because of the difficulties and trials that we pass through? But understand this, if you were a king 
and you were raising princes and princesses. If you were going to do it right, the last thing you would want to do is spoil them. Give them anything. Don't give them any jobs to do. You see, we're brothers and sisters of King Jesus, and we're going to sit and rule with him in the kingdom. And so he's putting us through a training program here on earth. Do you realize that as a Christian, as a brother or sister of Jesus, your life is incredibly significant? You, you have meaning to everything you do. You have abundance of life. And as we pass through this training program on our way to the thrones in heaven, Jesus says in the last verse of our text, Amen, amen, I tell you, the one who believes in me will do the works that I am doing, and he will do even greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. What's a greater work than healing a withered hand? Helping a soul get to heaven, quite obviously. What a wonderful joy to do the work of God. And don't underestimate the little things you do that are really big works. For example, on Friday, we were able to baptize a little baby. And why were we able to baptize that little baby? Because both parents were baptized by their parents, who then faithfully raised them in the word so that the faith could be passed down to another generation. And now, as a result of that, this little baby, Eliana, has a passport to the kingdom of heaven. We have a <clears throat> kind of a, a, a liberal, unbelieving brother-in-law in Sweden who travels around the world promoting uh, grassroots democracy. And so when little Eliana was born a week ago, he, he posted on his parents' website or face, Facebook page, he wrote, uh, welcome to another citizen of the world. And uh, Sarah responded, well, next Friday, little Eliana is going to become a citizen of the kingdom of God. What could be greater than that? Because Jesus will rule forever and ever and ever. These are the great works that we do when we raise our children in the faith. And you know, little Eliana is baptized now, but with all of our baptized children, it is our job, our great work of Jesus to raise them in the faith and to make sure that they, they learn about the way and learn the truth and learn about the life, the eternal life that Jesus has awaiting us. Amen, amen, I tell you, the one who believes in me will do the works that I am doing and he will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. And it is all about that final destination. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me. Believe, believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. How quickly we will forget all the frustrations and trials of the long journey on that narrow path once we see golden new Jerusalem. Jesus himself traveled the road before us and he spoke these words in view of his return to heaven at his ascension. Remember, when Jesus ascended, his disciples were standing there. They saw him who said, I am the way to heaven. They saw him actually go to heaven with their own eyes. He's the one 
who tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he's also the one who says, believe in me, believe in me.